Hello, Whiskey Gang. Welcome to Whiskey Whistle. I'm your host, Mark, and this is Whiskey Review number 111, I believe. Yes, it is. 111. And today we're going to uh, Isla, the Isle of Isla in Scotland. And uh, this is the first one I've reviewed from them, uh, from the Brook Laddie Distillery. Uh, Brook Laddie Distillery, and this is one of their heavily peated versions. They have two. They have a heavily peated, which is this one. This is called Port Charlotte. Then they also have a super heavy peated called Octomore, which I have tried once, um, but um, well, I haven't picked one up lately because of one, one of the reasons is the high price, especially here in Korea. Okay, anyway, so Brook Laddie. Um, really excited about this distillery. I'm also really excited about the Port Charlotte um, heavily peated version. It's not just peat. So it's not just your standard, you know, uh, peat and smoke and ash, um, asphalt and tar uh, kind of a flavor. But they do a really good job of um, balancing that, uh, that strength of the peat with um, other flavors. In this case, fruit. Okay, so let's get this one poured. This is Port Charlotte PC12. This is a travel retail version, so available exclusively, at least almost exclusively, at travel retail or duty free. And a uh, huge ABV, this is 58.7%. And PC12, the 12 meaning 12 years old, okay? So it's a 12 year old whiskey, it's 58.7% uh, ABV. And uh, from the Isle of Isla, as I mentioned, and uh, nice tight cork. Interesting color as well. Beautifully designed bottle. Um, Brook Laddie is now a, a, a subsidiary, or uh, at least it's owned by the Remy Cointreau uh, company. Uh, Remy Cointreau, the makers of uh, Cointreau liqueur, um, among other things. Okay, so a nice healthy pour again. I'm Got a lot of work to do tonight with um, this one. This is actually the same day as uh, Whiskey Review number 110 and 109. So in case you're wondering if I look a little bit red uh, in the cheeks or the nose, that may be why. It's also a little bit hot here in Seoul, uh, South Korea. That's where I am based out of. Okay. Had a very good friend uh, named Joel, uh, Joel Diamond in fact, who picked this up on my behalf. And uh, we shared the uh, the cost of the bottle. So big shout out to Joel Diamond. Uh, he's uh, starting a new chapter in his life. So wish him the best of luck. And uh, he loves peated whiskey. And this was, uh, I think he really enjoyed this one, especially with some water added. And so do, so do I, I should say. I would say, oh, so did I. So did I, and so do I. Uh, so PC12, 12 years old. We're going to let that sit for just a little bit. And we'll talk about the Brook Laddie Distillery a little bit. Not very much because there's a lot of information out there. Um, there was a write-up, I believe, in the New Yorker. Uh, there were probably multiple newspaper articles about the distillery. And, um, and then it's transfer to Remy Cointreau. Okay, so you can read about that. So we'll just give you the, I'll give you just the brief sort of um, blow by blow, we'll call it. Okay, so Brook Laddie. Um, so it looks like it's pronounced uh, Broik, Broikladich or something, or Broikladich, perhaps, Brush, Broich, Broichladich, if uh, you're American and you see the CH and think ch, okay, but the correct pronunciation is Brookladdy, laddie like a young, young man, laddie, a lad, laddie, okay, brook like a river, okay, so Brookladdy. Uh, which means Stony Shore Bank. And um, this is on the uh, Rhines, the Rhines, the Rhines of the Isle of Isla. Uh, it's on the interior, I guess it's kind of like a bay, and uh, it's looking across to another distillery called Bowmore, and it is relatively close proximity to the Kilhoman distillery which is, I guess, the newest operating distillery on the Isle of Isla, okay? They have two wash, two spirit, and one Lomond still. 
Um, okay, the low cell, now that's used for making gin. They also make a very interesting gin. Their output is 1.5 million liters per annum of spirit. So that's pure alcohol. Um, and they're pretty much operating at capacity, apparently five days a week, 24 hours a day. Um, and I can't read my handwriting again. Three uh, varieties. Yes, three varieties. <laughs> Three varieties. Brook Laddie is the uh, standard variety, which is not peated. Um, you can find uh, the classic Laddie is uh, is the one that's uh, quite quite uh, available, not that expensive, and excellent quality, bald at 50% ABV, uh, non-chill filtered, natural color, which is uh, all of their whiskey is unchill filtered, natural color. Okay. Uh, then you've got the Port Charlotte, the heavily peated, and then the, the um, Octomore, super heavy peated. Okay. 1891 is when the, the distillery was founded by uh, the Harvey brothers, William, John, and Robert. Um, and at the time, it was a state-of-the-art distillery. Um, most distilleries at the time were set up in old barns. But this one, this one was purposefully made with stone. Um, uh, stone from the seashore, in fact, which is interesting. They also have very tall stills. I've got a couple of photos of the stills here. There's one right there. Um, quite long necks, uh, which give you a very, uh, a much lighter, purer spirit uh, than the shorter uh, style. Okay, so the style they're using. Um, comes in and then goes up okay so quite a difference between the top of the pot and then the beginning of uh, the um, uh, what's it called the, the neck okay um, so the lightest the lightest alcohols are the ones that get up there first uh, and very few of the heavier ones uh, make it up uh, the neck okay uh, this is in contrast to many other Isla distilleries who favor basically almost like a triangular shape. Okay, so uh, lots of those heavier elements make it up for the other distilleries. Uh, this gives them an advantage in the sense that um, uh, they can uh, get some really, really, let's call it um, uh, the essence, the, they get the essence uh, of the whiskey coming through quite well. And um, uh, they don't get a lot of the, uh, the harsher flavors coming through. And um, therefore, they're probably the heart uh, of the distillate. Um, they can probably capture a little more of that. Uh, and they don't have to worry so much about um, uh, the, the four shots and the faints. Technical language, technical jargon, sorry about that. Um, anyway, so, uh, it works well for them. The classic laddie, I've tried it. It's wonderful. Anybody can enjoy that. And I have a host of colleagues that absolutely love classic laddie. Um, and, uh, when they peed it, um, there's a slight, let's say slightly reduction in the, the strength of the peat because of that shape of the still. Uh, but they make up for it by putting out the super heavy peated, uh, which should be um, probably even more peated than some of the other Isla uh, whiskeys available. Okay, anyway, uh, anything else here? Um, well, just very briefly. So 1934, the, um, uh, the founder passed away, uh, William Harvey. And uh, 1936, it was sold to into corporate um, corporate companies and bounced back and forth, uh, back and forth like a ping pong ball um, from company to company. Uh, fast forward to 1994, it shut down, um, so it closed. And uh, then 2000, uh, Mark Rainier. Uh, and uh, him and a bunch of investors that he put together uh, bought the distillery. And this was a big, big story at the time because, you know, that was even before the whiskey, the Scotch whiskey boom. So really, really good foresight. 
Um, and uh, this was his baby. And I've got his picture here. I believe, I believe that is, no, that's Jim McEwen. The one before uh, was Mark Rainier. Um, anyway, this was his baby. He got it up and running. Um, the investors uh, were focused on him and he built the brand image and the brand power and the brand value of uh, Brook Laddie up to the point that uh, in 2000 and, um, 2012, when uh, uh, Remy Quantro uh, bought the distillery, they paid quite a hefty sum. Uh, probably had they waited until now, they would have paid even more for it. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Unfortunately, uh, Mark Rainier was pushed out, uh, so he's no longer involved with the distillery. Um, but um, they still have a few of the people uh, that were the initial, uh, let's call them the um, restarters of, of the company involved. And Jim McEwen, um, he was uh, um, the master distiller for quite a long time. He retired in 2015. I believe he's still quite heavily involved uh, in the distillery itself, uh, but he's given up his position as master distiller uh, to uh, the uh, new master distiller who is Adam Hannett, who you see on, I believe on this, I think it's his image. Yep, uh, on the can itself. And you can see him, he should be coming right next here. There he is, okay. Uh, anyway, uh, cheers to all of those gentlemen, Mark Rainier, Jim McEwen, and Adam Hannett. And let's get on to the nosing and the tasting of this whiskey. Okay, we'll have a short advertisement now right here. Okay, on to the nose. Port Charlotte PC12, 58.7 ABV. Huge, huge uh, whiskey. Um, let's give it a smell. Big peat coming through but it is a, uh, we'll call it an earthy peat. Um, doesn't have a lot of that uh, um, bandage, bandages smell that some other uh, peateds have. Very potent and yet also very fragrant for, uh, for a whiskey at this strength. Now, if you're new to whiskey and you come up to smell something like this, Start from far away. And you get a lot of the fruit. Get closer. Mm, the peat's coming through now. And then get your nose really in the glass. And yes, you get that, uh, that sort of slightly earthy, mm, I don't want to say muddy, but clay and, um, um, uh, the smell of a uh, garden center where they have all the soils. Also wood smoke. I find this smells a lot like pine wood smoke, which is mostly what we would burn uh, in Canada um, at night in the summers or in the uh, early fall or late spring. Anything else? Some saltiness. This is, these are from my notes now. And I wrote here, it's a brooding peat. It's not a, it's not a huge peat, but it's there and it lets itself be known. Um, if you are not a peat fan, then you won't like this. You won't like it neat anyway. Okay, uh, there's also some sweet chocolate and also some white chocolate to be found here on the nose, along with these, what I wrote here, stewed fruits apples and peaches. Okay, on to the palate. I'll try this neat. Now it's pretty strong, uh, so you have to take a lot less than you would if it were 40 or 46 percent. Cheers all. Pretty smooth. Give it one taste then go back in there again. Really opens very smoothly considering uh, the big ABV. 
especially for scotch whiskey, which is only distilled in pot stills. Um, so that's pretty, that's cask strength. Um, so it went from, you know, 65 something down to 58.7 over 12 years. Um, I write here, sweet to dry. Big, big sweetness, and then it gets into the dry spectrum of flavor, the mouthfeel. So some astringency, a little bit of bitterness, okay? Uh, the peat reasserts itself uh, after that initial sweetness. Uh, then you're getting a lot of fruit flavors, and I write here, fruit extracts, as well as fruit candies, apple, grape, peach, grape, including the skins, okay, of the Concord grapes. Almost like the grape must. Uh, that's the the grape minus all of the juice, and you're left with uh, the seeds and the skin. Uh, so the must. Very very fruity, however. And the finish is also extremely long, uh, as many peated whiskeys are. Okay, but um, I'm getting some rum raisin. Um, uh, some sen sen. Sen sen is that sort of licorice, uh, minty, little tiny, I wouldn't want to call it a candy, but a confectionery that, um, uh, that people often have, um, uh, before meeting clients or, uh, while driving, uh, in order to, to prevent, uh, falling asleep. And, it, uh, great for speeches, by the way, keeps your mouth and your throat very well moistened. Apple core, the core of an apple, like when you suck on that, you get that little bit of uh, bitterness from the stem. Uh, and right here, it's dry, and there's also some smoky plums uh, coming through in the finish. Okay, it's quite interesting. Uh, let's get on. Oh, let's add a little bit of water. Now, uh, I've got quite a bit. I've got about 40 milliliters of water there. Uh, so I think I can easily put in... One, two, so that's about six milliliters of water. And I'm just gonna add another little, little bit there, okay? So I've probably taken it from 40 milliliters to about 48, let's say, 47, 48. Um, <clears throat> can I do the math in my head? Um, well, 50, 58%, let's call it 60%, 60% of 40, so 24 uh, milliliters of pure alcohol in liquid form. And then 24 out of 48, okay, so a little bit less though. So we're, we're taking it down to a little bit less than 50%, so let's say 45, 47, something like that, okay? <clears throat> Let that mix and meld. Now, interestingly, with uh, the Brook Laddie Distillery, they are also advocates of um, transparency uh, in the Scotch whiskey industry. They're supporters of the Compass Box um, uh, petition. It's a petition, it's a drive, it's a lobby um, to get rules changed. And um, the Brook Lighty, this distillery also will tell you anything you want to know about the whiskey should you uh, email them and ask them. Um, now, I didn't do that for this one because it's got it's got an age statement on it, uh, at least not not explicitly. It doesn't say 12 years old, but it's 12, uh, 12 year old whiskey. That's why it's called PC12. So they didn't make a big deal out of that. And one reason is... Uh, Nobody would pay um, the money that I paid for this, that we paid, Joel and I paid for this, for a 12-year-old whiskey, which was, I think, around 165 American. Okay, so that's pretty pricey. 
Uh, of course, it is cask strength, and it is uh, Port Charlotte, which is um, really popular with uh, collectors, really popular with drinkers, really popular with um, uh, everyone in the industry. So, oh, you know, I forgot to mention the color. It's a nice brass shade. Now, I've added water, and it's still quite a, a brassy, copper-esque color. Okay, uh, there are some sherry casks involved here. Excuse me, which is what helps get this nice rich color. And uh, looking at the bottle from my angle, I've got uh, an extra light there. I don't know how that is looking, um, but uh, sorry, just give me one second. Do something here. Uh, close. Okay, we're still rolling. Sorry about that, a little message on my screen. Uh, I've got some extra lighting here, and um, the reflection off of uh, the surface of the whiskey in the glass is um, slightly, yes, like a copper, but also a little bit, a little bit pinkish. Okay, so that's interesting. Really lovely color, peach, uh, like some of the peachy shades, okay? All right, anyway, this is mixed well enough now, I think. So we can get on to the nosing, tasting, and the finish um, with water added, okay? We'll have a short advertisement right here. Welcome back. Thanks for putting up with the ads. Hopefully they're not too annoying. Don't forget, you can always skip them. Just click skip ad and you'll advance forward after about five seconds, okay? All right, here's the nose. Port Charlotte PC12 from Brooklady Distillery. You'll find the peat uh, wanes quite a bit. It's still there. It's just sort of moved into the background a little bit. And uh, how did I put that here? Peat wafts into the background. Uh, kind of like the... Um, um, uh, the uh, what can I call them? The... Uh, background singers when the um, uh, when the lead singer starts to do a bit of like a, like a monologue then uh, the background singers sort of step back and get quiet Ooh, as they move into the background and no I can't sing so don't ask me to do that again uh, again you're getting a lot of this volatile action happening so give it time why does it get volatile when water is added? There's some chemical reactions that occur and uh, releasing lots of uh, scents at once. Okay, you can read about that. Okay, but what's happening is it's getting even fruitier. And extremely so. And um, uh, this is what I've written here. Fruit candies, fruit jellies, fruit hand soap, fruit mentos, fresh strawberry and raspberry jam. Okay, so big fruitiness. How about the um, how about the taste? Cheers all, and cheers to uh, the retired Jim McEwen and uh, the young Adam Hannett as well as to Mark Rainier. Good job with this one. And all the people at Remy Quantro. Cheers. Mmm. Becomes a fruit bomb. And yet there's still some wood smoke there. Huge sweet fruitiness. Uh, the peat is still evident. Uh, some sweet licorice emerges. Orange lozenges. Um, so orange, almost like some of the um, artificial orange flavors you get in, in uh, those kinds of candies. There's some heat there, and that's because it's still quite high in ABV. Let's bring it down a little more. A 
Fruity, fruity, fruity. Touch of vanilla coming through now. But heavily mixed in with the fruit. So uh, orangey vanilla. Citrus vanilla. Strawberry vanilla. Uh, no banana uh, here and um, uh, other fruits. I'm not getting a lot of the dried fruit flavors. Um, mostly these fresh citrus, uh, apple, maybe a bit of melon. Okay, how about the palate now? Hmm. That's more like it. Don't be afraid to um, add enough water that it gets to the point where you are able to enjoy it. Okay? You can pretty nearly take this into um, double, double the volume. Okay? So if you're taking 30, an ounce of um, PC12, uh, you could add an ounce of water to it. Now, I wouldn't recommend that at once. Start with, uh, let's say, a quarter ounce. See how it is, okay? Uh, then uh, add another quarter ounce, or even better, by eighths, eighths of an ounce. Now, the peat has really waned here. Still wood smoke, still fruity. A uh, real fruit bomb here that's um, just just wonderful. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's so juicy. And when you swallow, you get this, this rush of peat coming up at the beginning of the finish. It's dry, uh, some dryness, lots of smoke, and a little bit of candy puff at the end there. Anyway, I could add more. Um, I think I'm just going to keep enjoying that as it is now, okay? So let's get on to the scoring for Port Charlotte PC12. Port Charlotte, I should alliterate my words a little bit better. Port Charlotte PC12. Uh, the Whiskey Whistle Whiskey score is going to be 91 out of 100. Solid whiskey. Well made. Well aged. Well presented. Uh, well uh, uh, well managed as well. Okay, So through and through, um, very well made. And um, uh, the nickname for this one, this is going to be the, uh, the Peated Fruit Gate. Why would I call it the Fruit Gate? I don't know. You know, it's like a it's like a mystery. How did it get so fruity? I don't know. If you know, let me know. Okay, so big fruit here. Uh, the fruit candy is delightful, and it's so well balanced with uh, the adult smoke and no mirrors. Okay, so nothing hiding here. Uh, fruit and sweet and. Smokiness that uh, that comes through there. <laughs> anyway, uh, hopefully you enjoyed that review. If you did, why not uh, subscribe? You can click right down here in the corner, like the video, share it with your uh, peat heads, uh, the folk that like peated whiskeys. Okay, uh, is it a peat monster? Uh, it is a peat monster, but it is a friendly peat monster. It's a cuddly peat monster. It's a fruity peat monster. Okay. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. Um, get that at Duty Free in, uh, in US, especially California. I think it's definitely at San Francisco, uh, SFO, uh, San Francisco Duty Free. Okay. Uh, love to hear your thoughts. Uh, leave a comment and um, hopefully uh, you'll subscribe and um, we'll keep up to date with all of the uh, whiskey whistlings here. Okay. Again, my name is Mark. You're watching Whiskey Whistle. That's the end. Goodbye, everyone.